Welcome everyone to the info session on study abroad scholarships. This presentation is part of GLOW, which is Global Learning Opportunities Week, which is happening this week. My name is Will Silier. I work at the UCLA International Education Office, and we also have with us today Vanessa Febo, who works at the UCLA Scholarship and Resource Center, and we will be the presenters. And we will be covering the following topics. So we're going to take a look at the types of scholarships. Who are the providers of study abroad scholarships? And then we will talk about the scholarship application and some helpful tips. And Vanessa will talk about drafting your personal statement. So let's start with types of scholarships. There are very many types of scholarships out there. Uh, I will just present the six more important groups I, I think you know, I found. Um, and this, the purpose of this presentation is for you to have a better understanding of keywords that you can use when you are online searching for scholarships. So let's cover these six types. The first one is merit-based. And when we talk about merit-based, we usually think about GPA, but it doesn't necessarily need to be only GPA. It can be your talents, your skills, your abilities. Maybe you're, you're an athlete or you have artistic or leadership skills. Uh, you have extracurricular activities. You have done community service. This is all included in merit-based. Need-based, as the name already says, is based on financial need, and it's for students from low-income families. Some scholarships will require that you be receiving financial aid in order to qualify. Student-specific is focused on who you are. Underrepresented or minority scholarships are the most common awards in this category. And it can be based on gender, race, religion, medical history, or other student-specific factors, such as if you're a transfer student, um, a first-gen, a single mom, African-American, Asian, Latino, and, and so on. And then we have destination specific. These scholarships are basically to motivate students to go to a specific destination or a specific university. One thing to keep in mind is that if you are interested in studying abroad, but you don't think you quite can afford it, this is one type of scholarships you, you should look into. The more flexibility for the destination you have, you may be able to find scholarships that are not so competitive or programs that are more affordable. Then a program specific. These are scholarships specific for the program you are participating, and we will cover that later on in the presentation. And then we have field specific, which is basically um, based on your major or your field of study. For example, we have a scholarship here at UCLA that's called the Komar Shideller Scholarship, and it gives priority to students from comparative literature in Scandinavian languages, majors and minors. Now, who are the providers of study abroad scholarships? There are four main groups, and we will go through each one of them in more details. But one is, are the, the first one is the study abroad organization or institutions. These are entities that provide, facilitate, or administer study abroad programs. And then we have private foundation and organization. This is a very interesting group of scholarships, and I will give you quite a few options on, on this group. And these are non-governmental, non-profit organizations or charitable trusts. We also have the government. The US government has some amazing federal scholarships that we will be covering as well. And lastly, businesses. These are corporate scholarships given by different companies. So let's start with study abroad organizations or institutions. 
Of course, as a UCLA student, the first place you should go to when you start looking into study abroad scholarships is the UCLA study abroad office. At UCLA, we have three options for study abroad programs. And I want to make sure you understand the differences because we get a lot of confusion on these. We have two programs that are managed by the UCLA study abroad office. And these are the UCLA travel study program and the UCLA global internship program. These happen during the summer. And as I said, the UCLA study abroad office managed these two programs. Now, we have one program that is facilitated by UCLA, but it's managed by an office in Goleta, and that's the UCAP uh, program, which stands for University of California Education Abroad Program. This program is open to students from the entire UC system. So let's take a look at UCLA scholarships and UCHP, UCAP scholarships as well. So if you decide to apply for one of these three programs that are either managed or facilitated by the UCLA Study Abroad Office, what should you expect when you are looking into scholarships? Okay, so we have, I kind of divided them here into campus departments and programs, and there is some overlapping, but I just wanted to give you a better idea of how the scholarships are provided. Campus scholarships are scholarships that independent of the program you are participating, you may be eligible to apply. For example, you are going on a UCAP program to London, so you can apply for the UK scholarship. Or you're going with the travel study program to Italy, you can apply for the European scholarship. The Shirley and Walter Wang are, is a scholarship for middle income students. And the Jerry, uh, Richard and Jerry Leeds is a scholarship for the humanities division. So if you are pursuing a major in the humanities division, you can apply for this scholarship. The Moody Glacier scholarship is one of very specific. Any UCLA student can apply, but you need to be going to Israel and you must be studying at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. So it's quite specific, um, but it doesn't matter which program you are participating in. If you meet the eligibility uh, requirements, you can apply for those. Now, departments and programs, they are very much um, specific to programs. So let's suppose um, the, the travel study and the global internship programs are very connected to departments at UCLA. And let's suppose um, Spanish, the Spanish department has a professor who will be leading a travel study program in Barcelona. So there will be a specific scholarship for the students applying for this program. Uh, the global internship programs, if you're part of global affairs, you have a scholarship provided by the department at UCLA that is for students participating in the UCLA global internship program. These departmental um, scholarships, if you're applying for a UCAP program, most likely you are not going to be able to apply for any of these departmental scholarships. However, we come to the programs. There is a scholarship for any student applying for UCLA Travel Study program. There is a scholarship apply, uh, for any UCLA student applying for global internships. And UCAP has their own scholarships. For example, Global Scholarships or Memorial Scholarship, the Guardian Scholarship. And we're going to take a look at the website a little later in the presentation. But just for you to have an idea how the scholarships work here at UCLA. And then besides UCLA, we also have other organizations that provide study abroad programs, and they also have their own scholarships. For example, if you decided to go on a non-UC study abroad program, you may go through CIEE or AIFS study abroad, the only thing to keep in mind if you decide to participate in a non-UC program is that 
credit transfer cannot be guaranteed. Now, the second group is the private foundation and organization. And as I said, this is really interesting. I love um, doing research on these groups. I'm just going to mention quickly some of these, um, just for you to have an idea when you go online, what kind of things do you can be looking for? So Fund for Education Abroad, this is a nonprofit organization and it gives preference to underrepresented groups, underrepresented groups in study abroad. The nice thing is you submit one application, but you can be considered for several opportunities. Uh, Scott's Cheap Flight, this is a team of travel experts that help people find the best deals for flights. Usually they give scholarships of about $1,000 award. Tortuga, this is a company that sells backpacks and they give a scholarship of $1,000 as well. And if you are one of the scholarship winners, you also get a travel backpack. Uh, Freeman Awards for Study in Asia is for US undergraduates with financial need who are studying, you know, want to study in East or Southeast Asia. DAD Foundation, it's, this one is primarily uh, aimed to graduate students or doctoral students, but they do have a couple of scholarships for undergraduate students. Uh, if you want to do internship or a summer program in Germany. And then we have the Bridging Scholarship and Watanabe Scholarship. These are both for a study in Japan. And the minimum duration, you either, either have to go for a semester or for the academic year. If you're going summer only, you will not be eligible for the scholarship. Um, Explore the World Scholarship. It's a scholarship of about $2,000. And the program has to include either an educational or a service component. And the last one, the Ad Passport Scholarship, um, it's a scholarship that is meant to cover your airline ticket. Also, it has to be a semester or year long program. And another option would be Rotary Clubs. Um, there are many scholarships that are offered by those clubs as well. Our next category uh, or group of providers is the government. The US government has some amazing scholarships. If you're interested in the Gilman or the Gilman McCain, we will have a presentation tomorrow at 1230 and we'll be covering that scholarship in details. Uh, so what is the Gilman? The Gilman is a scholarship for US citizens who are receiving Pell Grant. So if you're a Pell Grant recipient and um, a US citizen, then you're eligible for this scholarship. It does have a service project proposal that you have to um, complete at the end of your study abroad program, but it's a very simple project. The award is up to 5,000. So I have seen awards like from 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So from 3,000 to 5,000. Now. If you decide to study a language that is one of the critical languages for national security, then you can apply for a complement, which is the CNLA. And on top, let's suppose if you got 4,000 for the Gilman, you can get another 3,000 for CNLA because you are studying a specific language that is preferred by the US. Gilman McCain is also um, the same thing I said about Gilman would apply to Gilman McCain, kind of, sort of, <laughs> uh, but this is for dependent child or spouse of an active duty military member. And as I said, the Gilman is up to 5,000, but if you apply for the Gilman McCain, you receive 5,000. Uh, the Boren, let me see here, I got... Okay, so to clarify, green card doesn't count. I believe green card will not count for these scholarships. You do need to be a US citizen. Now, the Boren Awards. This is a very uh, intense 
scholarship application, but it's an amazing scholarship. If you're interested in participating or being involved in public service, this is an amazing opportunity. So you need to be studying at a region of the world that is selected by the U.S. and also a language that is selected by the U.S. and they are selected based on national security. You will have a one-year commitment to work for the federal service after you come back from your program, but the award can be up to $25,000. So it is a very, very um, great scholarship if you're interested in public service. We have already presented this uh, info session and it has been recorded. It's going to be on demand on the GLOW website. And the last one is the Critical Language Scholarship, or CLS. This is a summer program that is also, you can choose from 15 languages that are also considered um, nat for national security of interest for the U.S. And it's a summer program, and the scholarship will basically cover your entire cost. And the next category would be the businesses and corporations. Um, there are many businesses out there that offer scholarships. It doesn't necessarily has to be for um, study abroad, as long as you are earning credits abroad and transferring to UCLA, uh, this becomes part of your education. So even if you get a scholarship for college, it may, you may be able to use it for your study abroad program. Now, let's talk about application and some helpful tips. So before you start applying, you should do some research. As I said, the IEO website would be the best, the first place for you to go to, and we will take a look at the site in a minute. But that is a place that will show you some main um, national scholarships and all the scholarships that UCLA offers based on your program. Um, when you start doing your online research, create a list of your personal unique attributes and include them in your search. Like I said, the, you know, the types of scholarships. You can do a search, uh, study abroad scholarships for first generation students. So be familiar with what's available out there. And then you should get organized. So maybe like make a list of all the scholarships you want to apply for. Maybe you can create a spreadsheet, write down the requirements, the amount of each award, deadlines, and all the required documents. And then you can rank them. The ones you're, you're more eligible, you know, that you're, you're the most eligible for, uh, to the ones that, you know, it may be, a little bit of a stretch, but hey, it doesn't hurt to apply, right? Next, gather your documents, transcripts, essays, and letters of recommendations are the most uh, common documents that are required for scholarship applications. Just remember that some scholarships may require uh, official transcripts, and also letters of recommendation, you may need to, you know, take a little time. You, the, the person recommending you may take a week or two to write the letter. So do not procrastinate, start the process early. And finally, write your essay. Just remember that your essay is your chance to explain to scholarship providers why you truly deserve their financial support. And as I said, Vanessa will be covering those later in the presentation. Now, let's take a look at the UCLA website, the IEO website, and I will show you where to go to find the scholarship. So this is live. You go to finances, scholarships, and here we already have divided by programs. So if you go to Travel Study, here is a list of all 
scholarships available to travel study students. Remember, I said some are campus wide, some are departmental specific. So you would just have to read what the requirements are and what programs each of these scholarships cover. As I mentioned, um, UCAP is, uh, you will be only eligible, most eligible for uh, the campus-wide scholarships. However, if you go to this first link here, which is UCS, UCAP scholarships, that's where you're going to find all the scholarships that UCAP offers. But remember, when you apply for UCLA scholarships, you're only competing with UCLA students. When you apply for UCAP scholarships, you're competing with students from the entire UC system. Also, we have here national scholarships, and most of them I already mentioned. We have uh, scholarships separated by or listed by country or region. So there are quite a few here, depending on which country you're going to. And you also have scholarship directories and database that you can search for different scholarships out there. So the next site that I want to show you, so, okay, you want to apply for a UCLA scholarship. How do you go about that? That's where you go to the UCLA scholarship portal. And I want to share that with you. Okay, so this is the portal. You can see that UCLA has a lot of scholarships here. We have um, 16 pages of scholarships. The nice thing about this portal is that once you complete the general application, you may be eligible for scholarships that you don't even know about. Um, some scholarships, they are automatically assigned to students based on the information you enter on your general application. But I want to show you how you would apply for a uh, study abroad scholarship. So here, let me enter my just a second. So this is the application. You will just enter all the information. And when you get to the end here, you will have your personal statement. So you don't need to complete every single detail um, because it asks for like employment, internship, research. So just enter as much information as you think is applicable. But here is the personal statement. And Vanessa will be covering in details what you should and should not write in here, okay? Now, one thing that is interesting about this, uh, this um, portal is that if you go to my applications, you will see, okay, I haven't finished the general application. So I will not be allowed to apply to any other opportunity on this site because I have not completed my general application. But once you complete that, then you will have some recommendations and it will show here all the applications that you are completing. You do not need to apply to all the recommended opportunities or you are not limited only to the recommended opportunities. This is a way of the, the, the system matching you with the scholarship you know, requirements. So let's go to the Komar. Besides the personal statement, you will also have to answer all these questions, which you have a couple essays in here as well. Um, so this one is asking you to share an example of a time when you demonstrated open-mindedness, resilience and resourcefulness, and how that has prepared you to be successful while studying abroad. And the other one is, please describe how or if your field of study fits with your study abroad program of choice. So these are two essays. Um, scholarships, they are different depending on which scholarship you are applying for. But you can come here and take a look at the award amount 
and the deadline for this application. So for students going abroad during winter and spring quarter, uh, the deadline for application is November 15th. Okay, so now let's take a look at some help helpful tips. Just be realistic about the award amount. Um, some scholarships may offer like $500, $1,000. The average is between $1,000 and $5,000. Um, you should apply to as many as you think you're eligible for because even if you apply for scholarships that have smaller amounts, you know, they will add up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that some scholarships, uh, scholarship organizations, they may notify students after the program withdrawal deadline. So keep in mind, um, ask yourself, can you afford your program if you don't get the scholarship? So if you receive the scholarship um, information afterwards and you were not awarded that, can you still afford the program? Another tip get your essay reviewed. You know, that's so important. I have read many scholarship applications and it's really frustrating when we get a, an essay with grammar mistakes or something that was copied from here, there. Um, you know, you will be losing points if you don't pay attention to what you're writing or your grammar, you know, review for any mistakes. So start asking, you can ask, um, campus writing labs, tutors, the scholarship resource center, even your peers that are strong writers. Ask for help and start early. Another thing, submit the application early. Do not wait until last minute. Sites tend to crash at the last minute. Also, you need to check the time zone if you're applying for a scholarship that is provided by someone in the East Coast you may miss the deadline if you wait until last minute. And just double check to make sure the application is not missing anything. Now, when you think about scholarship, you just think about money, <laughs> cover all the cost of your program. But scholarships have also non-monetary benefits. Your resume can showcase your scholarships and make you stand out and make you a more attractive job candidate. Also, some scholarships offer alumni programs after you study abroad time. For example, a scholarship may provide a mentorship program or may connect winners with nonprofit organizations for volunteering opportunities, internships, or even jobs. The two scholarships that I had mentioned that are federal uh, scholarships, um, Gilman the Boren. Alumni of these scholarships are eligible for a special hiring status with the federal government, which is a great benefit. Also networking. Networking can open the doors for academic research opportunities and even jobs. So you should keep this in mind as well when you're applying for scholarships. And then uh, financial aid implications. Scholarships can be great, but they can affect your scholarship, uh, your financial aid package. So when you start applying for scholarships before, you know, accepting them, you should talk to your financial aid advisor to see how uh, the amount of scholarships or how the, um, you know, the scholarships you're receiving, how they can impact uh, your financial aid package. And lastly, avoid scams. You're going to be online, you're going to be searching. Just be, be careful with unsolicited offers because you, most scholarships, you, you do need to go through an entire process. And if you get offers, hey, you should just apply, just send us your name and your social security number and we have $5,000 available for you. Be very careful. No one can guarantee award. There are no fees to apply for scholarship. If you find any scholarship out there charging, that is a no-no. It doesn't cost any money to apply for a scholarship. Be very careful with your personal information. Yes, they will need basic information from you, but don't provide anything like 
your social security number. And anything that sounds too good to be true, you know, just be, be wise and be careful out there. And if you have any questions, I am the manager for IO um, Study Abroad Scholarships. So you're welcome to send us an email. You're welcome to drop in on our virtual advising. And if you need to contact me personally, you can send an email to info at io.ucla.edu and they will forward it to me. And at this time, um, I will pass the presentation to Vanessa and she will be talking to you about your personal statement and also um, you know, tips on how to write a good essay. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Thank you for your patience as I set that up. Um, my name is Vanessa. I'm uh, with the Scholarship Resource Center. I'm a student affairs advisor here um, at the Scholarship Resource Center. Um, and I will be talking with you a little bit today about riot drafting personal statements and ways in which you can make your odds of winning a scholarship once you've found the scholarship. Um, much stronger and some great tips that can really help you strengthen your application. So I also quickly wanted to mention um, a little bit about our center. So we are the Scholarship Resource Center. We're located in Copa Commons. We have um, in-person consultation or office hours. We have workshops, including drafting personal statements for scholarships, letters of rec, and searching for scholarships. This is more general than study abroad, but we do um, include study abroad as one type of scholarship that we work on with students. Um, and we also have a website where you can schedule writing appointments with us, um, which may be very useful to you because we specialize in scholarship essays at the center. Um, so if you're writing a scholarship essay, it's, it would be a good um, opportunity for you to get our eyes on it and schedule a virtual writing appointment with us. So what we're going to cover today is what is a personal statement? What do this, what do scholarship committees want to see? How do you create a document that will make you competitive? And we're really going to be talking about two types of essays when we're talking about um, scholarship essays, especially when you're applying to UCLA scholarships. So and I'll get into that in a minute. But generally speaking, a personal statement um, talks about your past and constructs a narrative about how you found a passion or an interest in a particular field of study. Um, and in the case of study abroad, in going to a particular place to do a particular program. And it really covers how that has informed what you plan to do and how that will help you in your future. Um, so what does the scholarship committee want to see and how do you create a document that will make you competitive? That's really what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna break down a personal statement is and what it is not. We're gonna talk about the importance of an opening anecdote. And I'm gonna go through what an outline for a draft might look like. So a personal statement is not a resume. It is not a list of achievements. It is not a list of awards and accolades. And it is not a brief history of your entire life or your entire college career. Um, a personal statement differs from that I want to talk about the list of achievements. It's really a highlight of different activities that you have done, leadership moments or classes or language study that have informed what your interest is um, in your future career or, and in this case, specifically in your plan to study abroad. A personal statement is a window into you. It's the chance to let the scholarship committee get to know you, and it's a document that might compel the committee to read your resume. So for most scholarships, especially the study abroad ones, it's very rare that you will actually have an interview. So this is the opportunity for them to learn about you beyond the numbers. Um, I cannot stress enough how important the personal statement essay is for scholarships in general and especially for study abroad. So beyond GPA and meeting the eligibility requirements, what's really going to determine if you win a scholarship is your personal statement and letters of recommendation. 
Before I talk about a potential outline, I'm going to give sort of a um, talk about two types of scholarship essays you might be asked to write. Um, and so ways that you might tweak this outline for that, and also um, a caveat about applying to UCLA scholarships specifically. So the two types of scholarships you might, essays you might be asked to write are personal statement and a statement of purpose. And they may not call it either of those things, they may just say write an essay. Um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference, which is important. So a personal statement, as I said, looks back on your past and reflects on how your past has informed your future goals. Um, a statement of purpose is more forward-looking, so it is more about what you plan to do. Typically speaking, study abroad scholarships will be a little bit more towards what are you planning on doing. They'll want to know about your past, but the idea is they want to have the sense that you have a reason, a purpose, um, a concrete goals that you wish to achieve by going to this other country that you could not achieve if you stayed home. Um, and then the second caveat is about applying specifically to UCLA scholarships through the UCLA scholarship search portal. For the UCLA scholarship search portal, um, as we'll see said, that you have to complete a general application first. Um, because you have to include, um, complete a general application first, you first have to write a personal statement that's very general, um, that can be used and will be submitted to any scholarship you submit through that portal. So that essay will be much more general about your future career goals and your aspirations and your leadership and past learning experiences. After you've submitted the general application, you'll be filling out the application for whatever specific scholarship you're applying to for study abroad. And that is when you really need to focus your essay, particularly on your study abroad experiences. So language experiences in the past, cultural experiences that informed your decision to choose that particular country program, and what you plan to do while you're there, and how it's going to inform your future. So as you can see, that's what I just said is a very specific version of the pot potential outline that I have before you. Um, so the potential outline applies very generally to scholarships, but I'll talk as we go through um, in the remaining time about some of the differences. So you start with an opening anecdote and followed by a statement of goals about your future. So the open, and we'll talk about what those are. Then you're going to talk about your recent past, your short-term future, your long-term future, and a conclusion. So again, you can absolutely tweak those changes. And in fact, you should, depending on what the prompt asks you to do. But this is a sort of general outline that you can use. So the opening anecdote is a little mini story um, that uses a lot of personal detail in an effective way to give a clear sense of who you are. In this case, what has defined you, what has influenced your goals and plans, and why do you want the things that you want? For specifically for the general application, that will be a lot more general related to your career. For study abroad scholarships, essays, what has defined you, you're gonna want to think about the things that have made you desire to travel to, let's say you want to go to Paris, France, um, and to study in um, an arts program. So you would want to talk about the things, in, not everything in your past, but the specific experiences you had that made you desire to study art in Paris. Um, so that is what has influenced your goals and plans, and why do you want that? It doesn't have to be, so I think um, something that students often think is that um, an opening anecdote, your little story that you start with has to be tragic or super emotional. Um, and you do not need to mine your pain or your suffering for a scholarship. Um, it can be something as simple as packing your own lunch for the first time, um, meeting a friend who comes from a different culture who taught you a little bit about their culture through lunch swapping or sharing food. Um, anything, it can be very small. The story is less important. It's more about how it shows how you were introduced to the goals that you have um, for the future, um, your, to your aspirations. 
after you have your opening paragraph, you're going to talk about your recent past. So what have you been doing the last couple of years that relates to the opening anecdote? So in this case, it's what opportunities have you pursued? What challenges have you overcome? What is motivated? What are you proud of? What have you learned about yourself and your fields of interest? And you should answer all these questions, the idea of how these past experiences will help you when you're in the program, when you are in your study abroad program. Then the next paragraph covers your short-term future. Um, so the next paragraph is short-term future in this case covers what you're going to be doing while you are doing your study abroad. So what do you hope to accomplish during your study abroad? What are some specific goals? Do you wanna join a study group? Do you wish to work in a lab? Do you want to do community engaged work? Do you wanna write an honors thesis there? Act in a play? Go on a special trip? Um, all of those are the types of goals you might talk about in this part. Um, what projects do you see yourself engaged in? What do you hope to learn or master? What communities do you want to get involved with? What is a challenge you might hope for see? How will you overcome it? So for example, a challenge might be that your language acquisition skills aren't very strong. Um, and, and so you might overcome it by taking an intensive course um, on that language before you go. The long-term future is equally important. It's what do you want in the long run? So what was the point of you doing the study abroad program? How will it enrich your life? Um, and this can be in terms of your personal life, but also in terms of your professional life. So how is it going to help you succeed in your future plans? What are you modeling yourself after? What are your goals after college? Um, and what do you hope to give back to the community you came from? What do you hope to take back with you and share? What do you wish to change? What are your hopes and dreams? And a big part of this is that you will learn something that you couldn't have learned staying home. So that's how I want you to think of it. Um, if it's, I will take mathematics courses and learn mathematical principles, well, you could do that at UCLA. So the question is why study abroad? What is it giving you that just staying home won't give you? Then the conclusion. So the conclusion could be pretty short. You circle back to your opening anecdote. You can relate it back to your future goals. You can add a little bit more detail or color to the story. Um, you can offer a second anecdote, or you can just offer some concluding thoughts. The conclusion can be pretty short. Essay, um, scholarship essays tend to not give you a lot of space. Um, before I talk about next steps, I just want to emphasize one last thing, which is reading the prompt. So I've talked a lot about sort of different types of essays you might be asked to write, the general essay, and then the more specific scholarship essay. Um, one way that will really dictate what kind of essay you write and how you tweak the outline that I provided for you today is the prompt. So a key step that you want to do as you're working on your essay, and this is something we can help you with in our appointments, is to go through the prompt carefully, underline the keywords and make sure, and I, this sounds really simple, but it's actually often not done, make sure you answer the questions. So that is my number one tip for writing a successful essay. So next steps, if you want additional help from the Scholarship Resource Center working on your essays, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom writing appointment with us at the SRC. You can go to our website to sign up for that. We are the Scholarship Resource Center. Um, make sure you have a draft or an outline before signing up, but we work with students all the time who have successfully won scholarships for their study abroad. So I hope I see you there. Okay, thanks, Vanessa. And now I would like to open for questions. 